just about the last person you would expect to find at an offshore oil and gas drilling camp in Louisiana. I am a vegetarian, a woman, an MIT student, from the Midwest, and an environmentalist. So as I got off the bus for a week-long program on oil and gas extraction, the thought going through my head was, what am I doing here? OK. I take a deep breath. Hillary, I tell myself, you're not in Ohio anymore. But that's OK. You're here for the same reason you came to MIT, to learn from others and to become a bridge builder, to connect people, fields, ideas that are usually separate, siloed. So I roll my suitcase off the bus and in the front door to meet the rest of the campers who I would be spending all day, every day with for the next week. And I get in the front door and freeze. There, slouching over various chairs and couches, playing foosball, laughing, drinking soda, were about 40 very Texan guys. I saw the worn-in, embroidered cowboy boots, the tipped hats, the big, easy smiles that seemed to be transplanted right out of a Western novel. I looked around, and there were a few other girls. We gave each other relieved little half-smiles. There was no need for words. It was 40 Texan guys, three other girls, and me, the vegetarian. And in that moment, I came to a powerful realization. I realized that this was the closest I'd ever be to feeling like I was on The Bachelorette. <laughs> Not a common experience for MIT girls. So I settled in for my week-long program about oil and gas extraction, and along the way, I began to learn more about my newfound Texan friends. Most of them were petroleum engineering students looking for better ways to get oil and gas out of the ground and into products. Now, I'm a materials engineering student focusing on clean energy investment. So yeah, a bit different. And still, we all became friends. We listened to Grateful Dead and the Allman Brothers together. We ate Mardi Gras king cake, and we talked about the amazing engineering feat that is floating offshore rigs. Now, if you haven't seen these things, they weigh thousands and thousands of tons and have to endure really harsh wind and rain and the salty sea for years. But the offshore oil and guys have figured out how to assemble these floating platforms. And in the middle of this conversation, one guy just casually throws in that they could probably be used for wind, too. And that moment was just like, whoa, what is wind power? Except a really big structural engineering problem, made mostly out of metal and fiberglass, subject to the same conditions as oil and gas assets. Now, if we could find a way to make wind float out at sea, where the wind source is a lot more reliable and stronger, wouldn't that be a giant step forward for renewables? And look, half this problem may already be solved, and I found out about it at oil and gas camp. Now, don't we all know this to be true, that the key to creative problem solving is often bringing in fresh ideas, fresh perspectives? This is why we need to bring radical inclusion to energy. Because there are other places where unlikely bedfellows can come together, bringing different pieces of the puzzle for the climate challenge. Each one of you has a piece to this puzzle. And with radical inclusion, we can bring it all together to create enormous value by solving big problems. Now let's talk for a moment about what I mean when I say radical, because I know I saw a few of you shiver. So when we think about radicals in history, we might think about people with signs, people standing out, screaming, alienated, called radical. But today, in our hyper-polarized world, 
What's radical is the idea that people with different perspectives, different interests could come together, sit down, and solve problems in a way that benefits all of them. Now, some people might call me a sellout for going to oil and gas camp and making friends with those guys. Aren't they the enemy? And similarly, the guys at oil and gas camp probably felt a bit awkward talking with someone who sees an energy future with, well, less oil and gas. So am I the enemy on both sides? As it turns out, we have an opportunity here to solve a problem that can benefit both of us. Every offshore platform eventually becomes less productive and less economical to use for extraction. The wells are capped, and the platform becomes a dead asset, sitting in the water. Now, why don't we both win if we use those dead assets to build newly productive wind turbines? We need their engineering expertise and offshore experience combined with renewable developers, wind developers, renewable financiers to make it happen. Our world is politicized and polarized. But the climate challenge is so big, there is enough room to find these win-wins by working together, and enough need to make the search worthwhile. And when I talk about inclusion, I'm not just saying have more women on the team or have more of XYZ identity. I'm talking about the need for us to cross disciplines when seeking solutions. I'm talking about you, the engineer, you, the businesswoman, you, the economist, you, the policymaker, you, the academic, you, the community member, you, whoever you are, and all the value, all the experience and knowledge you bring to the table that will light up when it finds its match. So let's find your match. Now, power generation is sexy, I know. But it's not our only challenge. The challenge is so big, so varied, there is room for everyone to be included in the solution. We all have a role to play, and the more types of people you include in your conversation, the more important your role becomes. So let me ask you a question. Are you a homeowner? How about a car owner? Does your business have a supply chain? When we think about transportation, manufacturing, businesses, waste, agriculture, construction, the list goes on. There's so much room in energy. It connects us all even if you don't feel directly connected to it. You, whatever your talent is, have something to contribute to the energy solution. Now, I came to MIT because I wanted to learn how to lead the energy industry, how to lead it in a transformation to our clean energy future. And to do so, I wanted to become a bridge builder to connect people and ideas, whether it's helping science people communicate with finance people, whether it's helping oil and gas people transform their own companies for the clean energy future, whatever it is. Because I know that if we can make clean energy make money for people, our transition will be more successful. But whoever you are, wherever you are, we can all be bridges. Each one of you has a part to play. I hope that three things will happen as a result of this talk. First, that you will think about what you have to offer in terms of contributing to the energy solution and combating our climate challenge. Think about how you can create value for yourself and for others. Second, that instead of sticking with your friends and your colleagues whom you know share your perspective, that you will reach out and give your family, your neighbors, anyone else you meet, the benefit of the doubt that they have something to offer as well. Even if they seem to disagree with you, even if they have different interests than you. And three, that you will think about 
how we can all work together by using this mindset to seek common ground and common interests so we can build towards a resilient, sustainable future. Humanity is in this together. Radical inclusion of all types of people is the solution to the climate challenge. I hope you will join me. Together, we can do it. <laughs>